Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Islands of Discord. In the last episode, we saw the families of both of our factions grow, as tiny little babies were born in each of their nests. Of course, the ever hopeless romantic Roduke Rome ended up taking on Lala as his mate, and Misfit was his very first son. With that beautiful mask that almost looks like the savannah grass itself, I think he's going to be wonderful at melting into the shadows here. He is going to be a little thief for sure. But right now, his father is a bit distracted, because the rogue male that was bothering the Palin sisters has now wormed his way into their territory. So while they're trying to find a way to chase him out, or at least get rid of him once and for all, they've also discovered that they have a way to spy on the Balance Sisters now. As long as they keep this pathway hidden, keeping that grass between both of their lands, they might be able to gather a little bit of information on their foes. Oh, and do I actually see a permanent nest down here? Oh my gosh, I missed that before. It must have been hidden away by all of the savannah grass. Well, that's interesting. A permanent nest right in between their two territories. It makes me wonder if one of the bandits is going to use this later. It would be a very good nest for one to use, if perhaps they ended up falling for the other faction. You know that forbidden romance is going to pop up on these islands sooner or later. But right now, everybody is pretty much all tired out. I think the only creature with energy left is Robin back here. Now, she definitely strikes me as one who has plenty of energy to spare. She loves playing hide-and-seek with the peaceful bear. She loves running circles around him and her brother, so she's probably going to be pretty tricky for her mother to pin down. But since Seafoam is planning to take them on a little field trip to the ocean, I think she's going to be happy with that. She'll be more than willing to listen as long as there's adventure involved. So let's go ahead and skip the day. We'll have her settle down right next to the peaceful bear for now and cross our fingers that he's still going to be willing to watch after our kids after this. We might actually want to gather up some more nesting material soon. Oh, especially because this current nest seems to be going bad. Mr. Crabbit, did you do something to our nest? It's bad enough that the Crabbit has actually settled down inside it, the worst possible place for a Crabbit to be. But now it seems we're going to have to repair it before it truly withers away. Well, I guess first things first, let's see if we can take care of this rogue male invader. Oh? Oh my gosh, I almost missed you. Do we have another rogue male back here? Oh, no way. You know, the one problem with extending the lifespans is that the rogue males also have an extended lifespan. So he has 28 days remaining on his lifespan, along with this one back here, and who knows how long he has left. Oh my goodness, what are we going to do? We're going to have to bring you guys back because now your own home is under siege. That is the life of a bandit, though. It seems like they're always attracting enemies. So I guess we should probably move Lala away first. If we bring her over to the stump, is that going to be too close to the other rogue male? I guess it just depends where he ends up going. Luckily, she'll still be able to protect her baby if she's right here. Oh, good, and it looks like the other rogue male may have left. And this one down here has opened himself up to another attack from you, Rodugro. Go ahead and send him packing. Hopefully, that'll be enough to startle him away from any of our tribes because the bandits won't rest until their land is safe once more. So let's see if we can find a way to bring you guys back to the main camp. You're going to have to abandon this spying mission for now. I'm not sure if they caught a glimpse of the peaceful bear just yet, but if they did, you can bet that that information is going right back home. I guess we'll bring Roducro up here. Oh? Oh, Seafoam. Oh no, you found a leech. Well, I guess that would be a good way for you to teach your daughter about the dangers of the water, too. She'll come over here and pick that off of you in just a moment, because first we need to make sure that our brothers are moving through the darkness. On our little Donomingo friend, too. Coming by to check up on your family? You know, I'm not sure if we ever explore the connection between Donomingo and Bandit back on the Harmony Islands, but I really do want to deepen that connection here. The fact that the Dodomingos always steal our nests seems pretty bandit-like to me. 
so I wonder if maybe they're going to like raise these Dodomingos as pets or something? Surely they would be seen in a very positive light, because they're going to help the bandits find new bases to loot, but we'll have to leave you in the darkness for now, so hopefully you'll be willing to follow. This is going to be Rodiukro's last turn, so let's set him up back here. Maybe just seeing this spiky-bodied male in all of his fury will be enough to scare the other rogue male away too. All of this commotion probably has a misfit quite intrigued too. He probably wants to know why he can't help out chase these invaders away. He's a little bit too young though. His energy will end up failing him even if he tries. But I can't see the little prince sitting still. We'll have him dart on over to his father's side, stumbling through the weeds as he goes. And I guess we should probably leave Kuvan with his extra turns, just in case things take a turn for the worst. That means we'll be going back to you guys to finally take care of that leech. So we'll have the baby swap places for now. Robin can take on her second gem, which means she doesn't have to stay under the watchful eye of our peaceful bear anymore. She can go all the way down here to meet her mother, right up against the shore where the Krabbits are looking very, very happy. Though unfortunately, they're empty quad this time. I believe it was when Robin herself was born. The Krabbits actually brought the Balanced Sisters a few gifts of shells. So that's probably what Seafoam is hoping she's going to find. But let's bring her back here. Oh, hello, not again. Wrong time for you to show up against Quicksand, buddy. She's going to send you packing too. Even the Krabbits are trying to chase away these rogue males now. He has just tricked the Balanced Sisters one too many times. The other rogue male is getting closer as well. He must be a bit wary now. There's basically a wall of spiky bodies keeping him away right now. I wonder if they're stopping the wanderers from spawning too. Hopefully they're not taking up any places for potential followers. I guess since the message hasn't really gotten out yet about our deities and their little challenge, maybe that's why nobody seems to be too interested in joining their cause. That's why they're only finding these wandering rogue males who are afraid to plant down their roots. They are not the types for commitment. But go ahead and pick that leech off of your mother for us, Robin. As we swipe again at the rogue male one more time, we can at least have her son skitter to her side. Oh, as he takes on his first gem too. There you go, little Simber. The blue gem of the Balanced Sisters. Now, while Robin is very adventurous, and loves to play games, I do see Simba as being a little bit more faint-hearted. He seems very shy to me, the type who would prefer to just snuggle up next to this peaceful bear. Not at all the brave soul that his mother Quicksand is. I don't think she would fault him for that. She knows that it takes all kinds to run a truly successful tribe after all. He probably reminds her of her sister in a way, but she is still going to try to get him to push his limits. To go past those comfortable boundaries, because she of all creatures would know that there's no place for weakness here. Who knows when the next Baryina attack is going to come around, and who knows which side it's going to end up on. Now Seafoam, it looks like you have two turns left. Unfortunately, I still don't see any more shells, but we did have another Krabbit out in the darkness over here. So I wonder if maybe we just have to worm our way down the shore. For now, since your daughter is a little bit tired after picking that leech off of your fur, let's have you just pick up some of the grasses instead. Trying your best to gather up more nesting material for the peaceful bear, of course. Since your sister seems to be a little bit busy. Now with our last turns over by the bandits, do you see that other rogue male? Yeah, still lurking in the darkness. Oh, he is not going to leave you alone. Let's have you two pick up the grasses too. We'll have Lala do the same, making an escape route if nothing else. Oh no, we are not doing this again. There's only one turn left. I think Lala might be a little bit too frightened to move anyways. Let's go ahead and skip the day. We are getting rid of this rogue male. We have had way too many rogue male babies for comfort. Did you actually hear a bear Yina? Oh my gosh. Oh, I did hear a bear, Yina. Our poor Balanced Sisters, like how many times can they be attacked? This is getting a little bit ridiculous. Well, let's see how many days you have left on your lifespan. 21 days remaining. Oh, quicksand. I mean, I guess it's not a bad thing. 
that means that she might actually be able to unlock the claw for her faction. If our dear crow doesn't get to it first. Now the Savannah Prince can see for himself the invader in their midst. Maybe we'll wait one turn? He might come a little bit closer, and then we'll be able to take an extra swipe. So as we move Seafoam down the shore, taking her BB with her, of course. A very important field trip. Do you see what I see, little one? That is the very same type of leech that unfortunately infected your mother, so you might as well take a swipe before it can even get to you. We know that that's working toward the claw as well. So I don't know, maybe the Balanced Sisters will actually see the claw first in their arsenal. Definitely not what I expected out of them. So far it has definitely seemed like the deities, the other ones at least, the ones watching over this entire challenge, have been favoring the Balanced Sisters. I still figure that the Baryinas must be some sort of gift from Anime in her own special way. She would definitely consider this challenge of hers to be a wonderful gift for them, even though it's pretty menacing right now. I'm starting to wonder if maybe we should move her away, though. I'm not sure if the rogue male is going to be able to follow her, but it might be a good idea, since she only has one turn remaining, and we still have so many other turns to make. We could perhaps have Simber skitter his way to the peaceful bear's other side. Maybe startled by the sound of that bearina growling in the darkness. And Quicksand herself will lunge after her baby. Afraid to lose track of him now? Did you forget to pick up that bunny meat before? I mean, it doesn't seem like there are any other dangers out here. She must have just forgotten to pick up the bunny meat when she took one down earlier. I'm going to assume that's probably where that came from at least. Oh, Seafoam, it looks like Robin is too tired to grab this leech. That's going to fall on your shoulders, then. Let's go ahead and move the bandits around, and then we'll come back and take care of that leech in the end. Yeah, maybe it's time that you two actually just chase this rogue male away. Let's have Kuvan jump up the path as the leech finds the baby, and we'll have Roducro try to skitter around the side, perhaps. Oh! This is what you were trying to show us. Oh, the Totemingo found another nest? Well, perfect. Goodness knows we're going to need it, because it's clear that we need a much bigger army over here to protect all of your stolen goods. And speaking of which, Lala, now that we've gotten rid of the rogue male, now that he won't have a way to get to you, maybe it's about time that you return to crafting your little potions out of berries. We'll have you pick all of these off of the berry bush. Ooh, trying to sneak up behind Roducro? Well, that simply won't do. He's going to send you packing, too. Good thing they have those quills on their backs. That seemed like a pretty calculated sneak attack to me. Maybe that's why the bandits were gifted with the spiky body. They might not be known for their unending loyalty or anything, but if nobody's going to watch their back, at least they can watch their own. Well, Kuvan, since you're doing a pretty good job of blocking that pathway, keeping the rogue male at bay, maybe you could actually go ahead and pick a few berries of your own. It's been a while since you've indulged in berry picking, I guess. And maybe you could try to learn a thing or two from Lala. Even though her home-cooked remedies haven't really worked on you yet, maybe all it needs is the touch of a deity. And poor Misfit, he is getting so, so tired of sitting around in the nest all day. He's four days old, though. He might actually be growing his second gem on the next turn. And then you can bet he is going to dart off into that savannah grass like a little ghost. He's probably just as haughty and confident as his uncle and his father. He thinks he knows the best way to keep these rogues at bay. So we'll see if he's right pretty soon. Now, Seafoam, since the roles have been reversed here, let's go ahead and pick this leech off of your daughter. Still no shells, though. Not a single one out here? I wonder if perhaps you're going to have to wait for another one of Splash's gifts. We'll bring you over this way, just in case. Oh my goodness, two permanent nests side by side? You know, this wouldn't be a bad place for the bandits either, then. It's probably a good thing that they didn't see this place first, because they would definitely want to settle down right here. The Balance Sisters aren't going to use any of this, though. And in fact, we should probably bring Seafoam back soon. She still has another baby to have, and she needs to make sure that she patches this up before it ends up withering away. So let's go ahead and skip the day again, watching the darkness for the Baryina first of all. Oh, Mr. Peaceful Bear! 
did you seriously just sit right on top of our nest too? Honestly. First it was the Crabbits, and now it's you? Well, Seafoam is certainly not going to be using it now. I wonder if he's trying his best to fix this thing up for her. Though, of course, she's going to need a little bit of extra help. Maybe that's even something that Simper has picked up on. Can he repair the nest too? Yeah, looks like he can. And of course, he can offer up the peaceful bear a little bit of extra nesting material. But first, let's just go ahead and repair the broken nest. See, hanging around the peaceful bear all day definitely has its perks. He has a few tricks up his sleeve now too. Sure is a good thing that all of the babies have grown their second gems though. Because it looks like the bluebirds are finally getting involved too. Granted, I would like to consider having a few more babies between both of the factions. So we'll have to keep a very, very close eye on them. Oh, we finally have a wanderer out here? Oh my goodness, and it looks like he has the claw too. Sneaking around the savannas. Misfit, this might actually be a job for you. With his second gem in tow, as he darts off between the savanna grasses, he would probably notice this wanderer lurking under the trees. And while the leeches are still attacking our poor shores of balance, it looks like you have a new elder to meet? Oh, how interesting. The dark gray mane? New Killick? Oh, I wonder if you would be willing to help us. We could sure use that extra strength of yours. But I guess it's going to take another turn before Misfit can invite you. So we better make sure that we're picking our berries for sure. No dangers, though. No rogue males, so that leaves us safe to make our turns. And since it's going to take three more days before Lala can even have her next baby, let's make sure that we bring Roducro over here so he can breed with her now. Oh, now the fertility is going to be an issue. I see how it is. And is our wanderer actually inspecting the termite hills? Ooh, a regular traveler through Termite City. Maybe New Killick is actually going to be the creature who takes care of the termites for us. I wonder if he has a little bit more experience to lend. Well, let's have you go ahead and finish picking off your berries so you'll have plenty of food to offer to him. Check up on the rogue male again. Still very, very far away. It looks like he's close enough for our creatures to actually hear now. I wonder if he stumbled directly into the jaws of the Baryena. Well, if the Baryena wants to chase after him instead, then I certainly won't complain. Which one of you has the leech, though? Oh, poor little Robin, it looks like it's you. Well, Seafoam can fix that. Mother Seafoam will pick that leech off of you. Oh no, you found us again. These rogue males are going to be so relentless. Like, honestly, I wish there was a way for us to choose how long the rogue male's lifespan is due, because having them living on this island for that long is a very, very tricky. All the more reason to continue growing our armies, though, making sure that our tribes remain strong. Maybe this would even be a good opportunity for Quicksand to show her baby a little bit about hunting. Well, not hunting the birds of prey, unfortunately, though I'm sure you would absolutely love that. Maybe in the future, all we have to do is find a creature who has the wings out here. At least one of those wings, and then you have it for your own faction to use. Well, go ahead and swipe this bunny for us. And I guess we'll see what your baby thinks. To be honest, I think he's a little bit more taken with this nest business. Keeping the nest maintained for any expectant mothers. Quicksand is probably getting a little bit antsy, too. Well, she knows that her sister went down to the shore with her baby to try to track down some of those shells. She hasn't seen her in quite some time. So if we bring Robin up here, maybe we could have her light the way. Which should also give both of them a pretty good escape route. And it really looks like they're going to need it at this rate. Were it not for the limits of the game, I would assume that maybe the rogue male wants to join the Bound Sisters after all. But since he can be nothing but an honorary member, and since he would only be stealing from their supplies, I think they've realized that he's just here to leech off of them. Literally, just like the leeches in the water. Maybe that's even what Seafoam is explaining to her baby. While they do open their trust to many creatures, even if they appear to have some useless traits, they know that there's potential in everybody, so they would never make Robin feel bad for her no-paw, because she can do great things too. 
that still doesn't mean that other creatures won't take advantage of their kind-hearted ways. So that's why they're going to send this creature packing time after time again, because no matter how many times they accept him into their folds, he never seems to be willing to do his part. Oh, hang on a second. Oh my goodness, did our rogue actually swap places with our wanderer? Oh, poor little misfit, you are going to be so confused when you wake up in the morning. I wonder where the elder went. He must be winding deep into the trails of Termite City. But you're not going to rest until you find him again. Now as for you, Kuvan, where would be the best place for us to set you up? Maybe a little bit further down the trail? You might as well widen the pathways so you can see more dangers coming. And it looks like your turn ended just in time. We're going to leave Robin right in the nest. Hopefully that little rest will give her some more energy to build her own pathways on the next turn. We have to make sure... No. Tell me I did not just see that. Oh my goodness, a defender bear? Really? Oh my gosh, you guys, you just can't catch a break. You know, maybe it would be a good idea for the Balance Sisters to move? Like, I guess, after seeing these permanent nests over here, maybe Seafoam would realize that this really isn't their place to be. And not only that, but it looks like Splash's Krabbits may have passed away too. Well, that's an omen if I ever did see one. It is time for our Sisters of Balance to move on. To get out of here, to leave the rogue males behind. And unfortunately, to leave the peaceful bear behind too. But anything to get away from the defender bear. Because we are going to lose our deities in an instant if quicksand attacks. So that means we have to actually tear our way through the grasses right now. Quicksand would be able to lunge up this way. And then her baby could follow. Oh, but we're leaving behind the meat. We're leaving behind the nest. Oh, all of these valuable resources. But I don't think there's any other way to do this. I still see the rogue mail back here, too. That would probably be a good time to land an attack. But honestly, we should save your energy. We're going to have to invite the Wanderer next. So as Simber bursts out from the darkness, and as you follow, oh my gosh, leaving behind a bunny, too. How can you possibly resist? But you have to put as much distance between yourself and all the danger as you can. I'm sure that Seafoam is probably calling out to her sister, too. After seeing these Krabbits pass away, she knows it's time for them to move as well. We'll have you gather up the remains of the Krabbit, at least. That's a little bit of extra food in your pocket. And you can send your baby right on after her half-brother. I guess she would probably try her best to take the lead. Oh my gosh, everything wants to give me a heart attack in this game today! Oh, I thought you were going after Simber. His heart probably stopped too. Of course, the bird was just going after the meat that we left behind, but he probably thought those talons were just like an inch away from his face. Oh, Seafoam, come over here right away. Gently urge the baby to go meet up with Robin and hide away in the savanna grasses. Oh, this is definitely a setback for you guys. But I sure hope that this new area is going to be much more peaceful. You should definitely be far enough away now. Let's just gently nudge Quicksand a little bit further up the shore just to make sure. And of course we're finding yet another permanent nest out here too. That's a bit unfortunate. But it also looks like something may have dug up a root out here. Oh, interesting. There's no mole inside this hill. So I'm going to assume it's not a molehill at all? Huh, I wonder if there's actually some wanderers out here then. It would be nice if you two could find a stump. While well, we did learn that the bandits are not very good at their motivational speeches, so they can't really call out to attract any new wanderers. They have certainly found their fair share of thieves nonetheless. They just need to take on a different approach to recruiting. So I guess it's probably for the best that we have Roducro offer up a little bit of their food, finally accepting new Killick into their fold. The wise old wanderer surely knows these pathways much better than the bandits, so hopefully he'll be willing to extend some of his knowledge to them. And aside from that, he is now the only creature in their tribe who has the claw like quicksand, so they're probably going to want to make sure that they keep that to themselves too. 
Since they haven't done as much attacking as the Balanced Sisters, that gift is very likely to get away from them. But honestly, I think Nukilic is a little bit more interested in following after the Prince of the Savannas. These two were the first ones to cross paths anyway, so maybe he figures that he could mentor the youngest. If only he could find him first. Let's have him go ahead and tear away at the weeds out here. That way we can get a little bit closer to unlocking the big nose too. That's something that I would expect the Bandit Brothers to unlock first, since they are all about exploration. So they've been doing their fair share of clearing out the grasses while they try to find new things. And how many more days do we have left on you, Lala? Two days remaining until she can give birth. So we probably want her to stay relatively close to this area, but I would like for her to pick some berries if she could only find some. I think the bunnies may have actually gotten to these, which is a bit unfortunate. Or do you think maybe New Killick stole them? Wait a second, did we just catch you red-handed? Look at that pink claws and everything. Oh, he is a thief, stealing from the bandits of all creatures. I don't know if they would be offended or if they would be impressed. But this is your chance, Misfit. Since it looks like there are no berries on this shriveled up berry bush either, let's have you skitter your way deeper into the darkness. Maybe we'll have him see if he can find anything out in this patch of savannah grass. Maybe that's even where the rogue is lurking. Let's have him listen around. Ah, uh, yes. It seems like he is actually chasing the rogue further away from his home. Maybe he's scaring him by pretending to be a ghost haunting the rogue male as he hides in the grasses. Well, that should be the end of this turn, too. So let's go ahead and skip the day one more time, just so we can make sure that the Balanced Sisters are settling down nicely. It is so unfortunate, though, this is the worst, that we had to leave behind their nest. I mean, at least we know that the Peaceful Bear is probably taking care of it, but we don't have enough nesting material to even make a new one. Well, the rains have stopped... It looks like all is quiet out here, so let's see if we can find you guys a little bit of extra food. All of that running has really worked up something of an appetite. Let's bring Quicksand up a little bit further so she can light the way over to the coconuts. And now we can finally start training your kids too. We'll bring Seafoam over here to grab this coconut. All right, it looks like you're going to have another job pretty soon, Quicksand. We'll have you take care of the leech for us, since the kids will be distracted by the coconuts. Or at least Robin definitely will be. She's going to see this as a challenge for sure. And she won't rest until she cracks one open. And where, oh, where did my baby go? Poor Quicksand is going to have so much trouble keeping up with Simber, just because he's so frightened now. We'll tuck him away deep into the darkness laying up a little rock that he could hide behind. So at least we found the perfect den for Simber. And as we have Quicksand go ahead and pick up some of the grasses, let's have them all sniff deep into the darkness. Seeing what they can find around here. Oh, there are far fewer opportunities out here than there were at their old home. No berries for them to pick, only the coconuts to live off of. So, I don't know, in the next episode, you guys might actually end up unlocking the Cracker Jaw after all, especially with a Robin on the job. That means you guys, you're really going to have to put the pedal to the metal here, figure out what you're going to unlock before you end up losing this challenge right off the bat. Kuvan still has 21 days remaining, so still plenty of time to unlock a gene. But it might be a good idea for Lala to scoot on over here and grab these berries before anybody else gets too greedy. What did you find that time? Was there more bunny meat out here? Oh, how curious. I wonder if maybe the bluebird was just hunting the bunnies in general? I don't know, but that might warrant a little bit of investigating. You guys are probably on edge anyway with all of these rogue males. Another idea that you guys had that I really liked was that every 50 days, we could bring the two factions together, or at least the deities and some of their highest ranked followers, so they could hold a little meeting. There they could discuss their victories, because I'm sure they're going to withhold all of the chaos that took place over by the shores. Though speaking of which, 
if the bandits do creep back down to the place where they could do their spying, they're going to be very surprised to find those shores completely abandoned. I wonder if they're going to assume that the peaceful bear chased them away? Like, they never understood that the peaceful bear was just a great friend to them, and how heartbreaking it must be for the children to leave him behind. Especially for Simber, but at least he has a way to honor his memory by keeping those nests nice and full. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!